YouTube, man, and today I'm going to talk to y'all about that mind-muscle connection and how vital it really is to you achieving the physique you really want in the gym, right? So, let's get into it. The Put You On Game series is back, uh, and if y'all watch this full video, I promise you, at the end of this video, you're going to have all the tools you need to really developing that mind-muscle connection that you've been trying to develop for some time now. So, let's get into it. So to start off, let's briefly talk about what is mind-muscle connection. You've heard me say it plenty of times on my videos. You've heard other fitness people say it on their videos. But what really is mind-muscle connection, right? So mind-muscle connection is basically in its, you know, basic, you know, understanding is your mind really connecting with the muscle contracting and being relaxed and even holding an intention. It's basically your mind really connecting and not letting yourself go through the motions, but your mind actually understanding the whole movement and what's going on. So you, in, in the middle of a bicep curl, your mind is really in connecting with that muscle and connecting with your bicep. It's not connected with the shoulder or the tricep or any other muscle that you got going on. It is one in one with your bicep in that exact movement that you're doing. It is one in one, so when you're coming up, you're contracting, you're thinking about those muscle fibers, you're thinking about all your, the tension in your muscle building and then relaxing. That's basically what my muscle connection is in its basic terms. Maybe later we can break that down even more, but we're gonna keep this video very basic. So let's move on. So now that we've defined what my muscle connection is, let's build on that and figure out how can we actually develop that within ourselves, right? So my muscle neck, my muscle connection, I'll tell you one thing or, or a few tips that have helped me develop my mind muscle connection over the years that I've been training. So for me, one big major key, this like hold everything. This major key can really help you just take your physique and take your fitness goals to the next level. I promise you. So this, this technique that I'm going to give you, or not even technique, this major key that I'm going to give you right here, it, it's the whole video right here. So record yourself working out. I know a lot of y'all might not even want to do that. Like y'all feel like that might just be like, you know, being extra in the gym or whatever, but no, like put all that aside. Recording yourself in the gym is gonna help you out. Don't worry about anybody else. We all in the gym trying to get better anyways. And if somebody's judging you, like, tell them to move on. Anyways, so you're gonna record yourself. And then once you record yourself, like doing your set or doing whatever exercise you do, go back and watch that video. Go back and watch what your body looks like as you're doing that, you know, the exercise. Like, does it look like what you were visioning in your mind? We're gonna talk about that a little bit later as well. But the, when you're seeing yourself doing the exercise, does it look like you're, you know, you're doing the full range of motion that you thought you were doing? Like, I'm gonna throw some clips in here so y'all can see, you know, exactly what I'm talking about because even whenever, I've always recorded myself back like back when in like 2015, you know, 2014 when Snapchat was, you know, on and popping. I used to record my workouts before, you know, reels and all that became popular nowadays. But I would record my reels and those really helped me, you know, in my early stages of working out to understand, you know, what is my body really doing? And even when I watch some of my old clips, I see that, you know, I was really rushing a lot of the exercises that I was doing being, you know, a lot of like really young and just not understanding, you know, how vital my mind muscle connection was at that time. I thought I knew what it was, but I really didn't. But besides the point, I, you know, by recording myself, even nowadays, now that I've started to make reels, follow me on Instagram for more reels and more content and TikTok for more breakdowns, uh, shameless plug. <laughs> but, um, Yes, so like by recording myself, I've learned, you know, a lot about my body and a lot about what my physique actually looks like in real life. And that is going to tie me into, you know, my second point about visualization. Like visualize yourself and your body looking like the physique or, you know, the body or the fitness person that you really, you know, admire or that your goal is set to. Like if you really aspire to be, you know, this fitness model that's on IG or whatever, you know, be realistic about it. But if that's, you know, someone that, you know, you, that body type is what you're striving for, 
visualize yourself and visualize your body looking like that. And by you recording yourself, that's gonna help you track your progress along the way and also, you know, help you see how close you are to your goals and understanding, you know, how, how well are you performing these exercises that you're doing. Another big part of visualization and that goes, you know, kind of hand in hand with that is learning the movements. Really take the time to learn the movements that you're doing in the gym. Don't just go through the motions. That, that by going through the motions, you're completely dismissing the mind-muscle connection. You are completely taking your mind out of the equation and just letting, you know, your bones and muscles do whatever they want and just, you know, going through the workout without getting any of the benefits from it, right? So. Learning the movements is, you know, that's on you. That's you, you know, learning from people in the gym that are experienced, not just, you know, amateurs that are in there doing these wild exercises that y'all been seeing on Instagram that are going viral that we ain't even gonna talk about that. That's another story for another day. But anyways, um, learn from, you know, those fitness influencers from me, from other people that you like and that, you know, have the physique that you really are looking to achieve learn from them and learn the move like if they do tutorial videos and stuff like that learn from those really study those and now with you recording yourself doing these workouts you can see how actually like are you mimicking the exact movement that they are doing it are you doing it as slow as them are you doing it too fast are you not doing a full range of motion all of these things are going to play into the fact of your mind muscle connection when doing these exercises Really, honestly, slowing down these exercises and learning the movement first before putting on a whole bunch of weight is gonna put you miles ahead of other people when it comes to really developing that mind-muscle connection early in your fitness journey. And again, it's very important to understand that this fitness journey is a journey, it's a marathon, it's not a race. You're not gonna get from point A to point B, you know, over the length of like, you know, six months or whatever. This thing, this thing takes time. To, to really develop the physique that you want. Depending on your goals, you know, it's here and there, depending on who you are. But every time someone comes up to me and, you know, asks me, man, how did you, you know, how did you get the physique that you got right now? And I'm like, man, it's consistency. I've been doing this for over 11 years and I've been very consistent with always staying connected to the gym or just any activity in general, whether it's basketball, football, any of those things. But by doing this for so long, I have a very strong mind-muscle connection and I feel like what's helped me develop that mind-muscle connection over the time is the development of my muscles. So I'll give you a few examples with just a few exercises that I've done. So with the cable bar pull down, I remember back in the day, I used to feel it so much in my biceps and it took me a long time before I actually got to the point where I started feeling it, not even in my biceps, but more in my back where you know i started to really develop i i honestly clearly do remember feeling it so much in my biceps i did not like the exercise but i understood that you know i just had to give it time and eventually my mind muscle connection would understand that when doing this movement i'm really trying to flex my back and build my back and not my biceps same thing with rear delts your posterior deltoid that muscle itself is so small that if you're not if you do the exercise to whatever exercise you're doing rear delt flies um reverse pec deck flies any of those exercises if you do them too quickly you're gonna start feeling it in your back and feeling in other muscles than in your rear delts so i had to learn with that exercise to slow it down and over time as my rear delts started to develop my mind muscle connection to that muscle grew so what i'm trying to say here is basically as those muscles develop on your physique and get larger and get stronger and bigger your mind muscle connection is going to get stronger and bigger and with all that being said man i really hope y'all enjoyed this video i hope you have a better understanding of what mind muscle connection is and how you can start to develop it within your own mindset and your own physique as you go along your fitness journey again it's a journey it is not a race so just stick to it be consistent and you'll get to where you need to go so uh, and if y'all did like this video, leave a like, man. Leave a comment. Tell me what else y'all want me to talk about, other topics y'all want me to talk about in this series slash podcast. And hey, I'll do it for y'all. But until next time, man, we out.